I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Is your battery charger accurate? In other words, when it says you've charged to 4.2 volts per cell, have you? Or is it 4.21 or 4.22 or 4.19 volts? How do you even know if that's... How would you even know? Well, today we're going to talk about calibrating the voltage on your battery charger. It's actually kind of harder than it sounds like it ought to be. Stay tuned. In this video, we're going to cover the procedure for calibrating an ISDT battery charger. So if you have an ISDT battery charger, by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what buttons you need to push in order to calibrate it. But even if you don't have an ISDT battery charger, I think there's something in this video for you because the question of how do you know if your battery charger is actually accurate applies no matter what battery charger you've got. And the exact procedure for calibrating any other battery charger is, well, I don't know, we just Google it, right? I don't know. So then how do you know if your battery charger is accurate? Well, like how hard could it be, right? Joshua, you take the battery, you charge it, you plug in your good old battery checker, and then if it doesn't say 4.2 volts per cell, it's incorrect. You see the problem with that, right? The battery checker could be, could be off. Who's right? And so if you go and you take a bunch of measurements and, and some of them are different, how do you know which one is actually right? And that's a much harder question than it might at first sound. Now, one way to approach this is to get a calibrated multimeter. Now, we're looking here at a Fluke 87V digital multimeter. And if you were to look at the actual specs and features of this multimeter, you'd say, well, it's not that different from a $20 or $30 multimeter that you get you know, off of Banggood or Amazon or wherever. But this one is not $20. It is $368.85. And if you want it with a NIST certificate, it is $483.21. Why is it so freaking expensive? The reason it's so expensive is, well, number one, it's just built to a higher standard of quality. It's got better components. It's you know more rugged. It's adorable, etc. And it probably also comes with a warranty from Fluke, which means a lot. But the real reason it's so expensive is that Fluke has calibrated it to be accurate. And they've got a procedure like, how do they know their calibration machine is accurate? I don't really know how, but somehow they do. And they will give you a National Institute of Standards and technology NIST, a NIST certificate guaranteeing that your meter is accurate. But if you don't have a $400 calibrated fluke meter, I don't. I have a $20 Amazon meter. Uh, and it's probably so do you. Well, what can you do then? There are no good answers here. All of the answers I'm about to give you are bad answers. And so all of you guys who are going to get in the comments section now and say that's a terrible answer, I know. But if you don't have a $400 calibrated meter, what can you do? Well, if you know better than me, then put it in the comments. But here's what I've come up with. You take a bunch of battery checkers. <laughs> you got a bunch of battery checkers, right? And you, you, you put the battery on all of them. And if like three of them say it's 4.2 volts and one of them says it's 4.19, that one's probably wrong. I mean, odds are, right? Okay. Um, I can tell you that I tested my batteries with these. This is the BG8S from ISDT Battery Checker. Uh, and it's supposed to measure down to the 1 1,000th of a volt, which you might rightly be a little skeptical of. But I happen to have two of them and I tested them against each other and they were both... Uh, I, I don't know if it was literally to the one one thousandth of a volt, but definitely to the one one hundredth of a volt. And usually they were, I, my, my recollection is they were only off by one or two thousandths of a volt. And that's pretty freaking impressive. And that didn't happen by accident. That's how I convinced myself that these guys were accurate. And you can kind of do the same if you have several battery checkers and they all seem to agree. And then one of them is off. You, and you could see if your charger agrees with most of your other battery checkers or your friend's battery checkers or whatever. But if you do that and you just get a bunch of different numbers and nobody agrees, well, maybe you all need to get new battery checkers. I don't know. At the end of the day, you will determine whether you think that your charger is miscalibrated. And what tipped me off that my charger might be miscalibrated and led to this whole video is that when it would finish charging, cells 1, 2, and 4 would read 4.2 volts and cell 3 would read like 4.21 or 4 or whatever. It was off. 
And I, of course, the charger didn't think it. The charger said, no, they're all at 4.2 exactly. But then if I took the battery and I moved it over to another charger, or if I used a battery checker, then it would read off. And so I suspected that uh, pin number three, cell number three, was reading incorrectly on my charger. Based on all this, I concluded that my cell four on my ISDT T8 was reading 0 0.3 volts high. And by the way, it's cell four. A minute ago, I said it was cell three, and that's because I actually recorded the video you're looking at now like two weeks ago, not a minute ago, and I just forgot which cell it was. To calibrate the ISDT, first long press the button or the jog wheel to get to the system settings menu, then go up to system information, and you'll see this screen. Now long press the button or jog wheel three times. Nothing will appear to happen until the third time you do it, and then you'll enter this menu. You'll go to calibration and then, oh, you'll need to have your battery connected. Yeah, you, both the XT60 and the balance connector will need to be connected because you can calibrate the balance pins, you could calibrate everything. The next thing you need to do is input this unlock key. And the reason this is here is because you can screw up your charger completely if you go into the calibration menu and you change things willy nilly. So don't do that. They, they used to make you actually get the unlock key from ISDT by emailing support, but they just now they put it right here on the menu. You can see it says input unlock key, and then there it is right there. I'm copying it in, and you can do the same. And when you do, be very careful going forward. Or you can just, I mean, you could always put it back, but once you've gotten it out, like out of calibration badly, ugh, then you're in trouble. So I've entered it all cor correctly, and... Here I am in the calibration menu. The next thing I did was I got out my battery checker again and I just double checked. Cell four is reading 3.805 volts. That is what I want the calibrated value to read. Here now I'm doing the actual calibration and you can see I'm tweaking a few of the other cells as well. Cell two is reading 3.812. That's a little bit high. Uh, one of the things that's going on here is that you're calibrating in the one one thousandth of a volt, but the charger may only uh, show one one hundredth of a volt. Um, the extra precision, of course, is necessary. If you don't have something that reads more precisely than what you're trying to calibrate, then you're not going to be able to calibrate it. You can't calibrate to the hundredth of a volt if you don't have something that reads at least to the thousandth of a volt, preferably more. But anyway, so now we've got these all calibrated at right about 3.804, I think is what it was. And I'm going to go back out. And now it is reading consistent with the source that I believe was accurate. And as long as I'm here, I'm also calibrating the input voltage, which is reading a little bit off. I've got the cell checker plugged into the balance port, and I've got the uh, main discharge lead of the battery plugged into the, the power plug on the ISDT T8 and I'm setting it so it reads accurately. The input voltage calibration is less important because if it's off by a little bit, maybe it'll, you'll discharge your battery if you're charging, well, if you're charging off a power supply, it just doesn't matter at all. Um, but if you're charging off a battery, you may discharge the battery a little high or a little low, but I think the input voltage calibration is less important than the calibration on the output pins, which could cause a battery to be overcharged. And that is how you calibrate the voltage on an ISDT charger, or at least that's how I calibrated the voltage on mine. Do not underestimate the danger of this procedure. If your charger is not calibrated right, it will overcharge your batteries. I mean, maybe it'll undercharge them, in which case, what's the worst? You'll get short flight times. But if you overcharge your batteries, they can light on fire and explode and literally burn your house down. I am not exaggerating. So be very careful if you decide to do this, that you are confident that you know what voltage it should be reading. On the same time, a charger that is miscalibrated is equally dangerous. So if your charger is already miscalibrated, you either need to stop using it or you need to calibrate it so you're confident it's reading correctly. That's going to do it for this video. Leave any questions down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, happy flying.